This is part 29 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss jQuery change event. Change event is fired whenever an element value changes. All these elements, that is input elements, text area element and select element fire the change event. Input elements include text boxes, radio buttons and check boxes. Select element, radio buttons and check boxes fire the change event as soon as a selection is made. Whereas the other element types like text boxes and text area elements, they wait until they lose focus to fire the change event. Let's understand this with an example. On this form right here, we've got two text boxes, a drop down list, three radio buttons, three check boxes, text area element, a submit button, and a div element to display the result. So, first, let's design a form like this. In the interest of time, I have already implemented the required HTML. I'll have all this HTML available on my blog in case you need it. So here we have the first name text box which has got an ID, type is text and class is input required. In a bit we'll understand the purpose of this class. And then we have got this last name text box which again has got the ID, type equals text, class equals input required. And then we have the city select element and notice it also has that class input required and then we have the city options here. And then next we have the favorite color radio buttons. So we've got three radio buttons, red, green and blue. So here we have those three radio buttons. All of them have got an ID, type is radio and the class is input required. And if you look at the name attribute, all of these radio buttons have got the same value. And that is basically to make these radio buttons mutually exclusive. And then we've got the contact method checkboxes, so three checkboxes. All of them have got an ID, type is checkbox, and class is input required. And then we have the comments text area element. It also has got an ID and class is input required. And then the submit button and then the div element to display the result. So that's the HTML. And within our script section, we have the ready function wired up. So we want to handle the change event of the drop down list. So whenever the selection within the drop down list changes, we want that selected value to be displayed within the div element that's present right here next to the submit button. So we want to handle the change event of this drop down list. So let's flip to Visual Studio. So if you look at that drop down list, it says select element and the select element has got an ID, DDL city. So let's find the select element by ID. So within our jQuery ready function, let's use the ID selector. And ID selector is hash and the ID of the select element is DDL city. So this is going to return that select element. And then we want to handle the change event. So we are going to use this function change. And whenever that event occurs, we want to execute some code, so let's make it part of this anonymous function. Okay, so when change event is raised, this function is going to handle that. And what do we want to do when that change event occurs? We want to retrieve the value from the drop down list, the selected value. So let's create a variable, let's name it selected value equals. So we want to refer to the drop down list element. And to do that, we can use this keyword. And to retrieve the selected value, we can use val function. So this is going to give us that selected value from the drop down list. And then what we want to do is display that value within the div element. And div element also has got an ID and it is div result. So let's copy that. So let's find the div element by ID. And let's use the HTML method to set the value that we want to display within the div. That's it. So let's save the changes and let's reload this page and look at this. As we select, look at that, I selected New York and that's what is displayed in the div element and Chennai and if I select select, it displays that select for some reason if you want to validate that. If I select select, we want to display a message here saying please select a city. You know, if you want to do something like that, then probably you can add an if condition here if selected value equals select then let's actually change selected value to something like this please select a city 
So let's save those changes, reload this, and look at this. When we select London, that gets displayed. Now if I select select, it says please select a city. All right, so here within the ready function, we are using the ID selector. So, and that ID is of the select element. So we are only able to handle the change event of the select element. But we know that even the text box, you know, fires the change event. As soon as you say, you know, enter some text here, and as soon as the text box loses focus, it's going to raise that change event. And when that happens, we want to display whatever value that we have typed into the text box in this development. Similarly, radio buttons also fire the change event. As soon as you make a selection, we want to display that selection within the development. You know, the same is true for checkboxes and the text area element. Okay, so let's see how to achieve that. Now, in order to achieve that, all you have to do is change your selector here. So we are using the ID selector here. Instead of ID selector, for example, if I use element selector, so I want to find all input elements and then handle their change event. Okay, so this is going to handle the change event of all input elements. But let's slightly change the code that we have here. So we want to be a bit generic here. So we want to retrieve the selected value. So let's create a variable here outside the change function. Let's initialize that to an empty string. And then within the change function, what we want to do is if that result is an empty string, then what we want to do is result equals dollar this. So it refers to the element that fires the change event. And we want to retrieve the value from that element. Okay? If it is not an empty string, that means you know we already changed the value in the text box. So this result has got something, whatever value we have typed into the text box. Now when we type something into the last name text box, then we want to append that value you know, to this result variable. Okay? So at that point, result variable will not be an empty string. So it comes to the else part. And when it comes to the else part, we want to concatenate to the variable. So I'm going to use plus equals. And then we want a comma. We want to append a comma. And to that, we want to append the value from the element. OK? And then finally, we want to display that result within the development. So let's use the ID selector. ID selector is hash and div result. And let's use the HTML method and then pass our result variable. All right. And look at the selector that we are using here. We are using the element selector. We want to handle the change event of all input elements. So let's save the changes, reload this page, and look at this. As I type, so we typed Sam into the text box. And when I hover the mouse, I mean, when we tab away, look at that. When the text box loses focus, it raises change event. And that event is handled. And we display that value within the development. Now let's say, for example, here, Sam Martin is the last name. And as soon as the text box loses focus, we handle the change event. And the value is displayed within the development. OK? And then look at this. When the selection in the drop-down list changes, that event is not handled now. Why is that? Because select element is not an input element. Okay, It's a select element. So that's the reason why the change event of the select element is not handled. Because here we are using um, you know, input element selector, meaning it's only going to handle the change event of all input elements, not of the select element and text area element as well. Say, for example, here, you know, when I type something into the text area element, even that change event is not handled. But whereas for the radio button, look at this. When I select my favorite color as green, look at that. That change event is handled because radio button is an input element. Similarly, when I make a selection from the checkbox, even that is handled. But the select element and text area element change event is not handled because they are not input elements. So if you want all these elements change event to be handled, then we could use this 
class selector. Look at this, we have this input required class on all the form elements. So if we want to select all these elements, we can use this class, right? So my selector now is going to be dot and the name of our class. So the class name is input required. So let's pass that here, save the changes. Let's reload the page and let's type the first name, Sarah. Look at that, as we type, we get you know whatever values within the text box, those get displayed. Look at that now, even the select element to change event is handled. Similarly, radio button, checkboxes, and text area element. So all the change events are handled. And look at the amount of code that we have to write. A lot less. That is the power of jQuery. And here is that example which we just discussed. Thank you for listening and have a great day.